What's up YouTube? Welcome back. My name's Tony. I recently purchased a new patch bay for the studio. And before I install it, I just want to go through and make sure all the connection points are sound. Because if there's one thing that you don't want to do with a patch bay, it's set it up just to tear it down, fix it, and set it up again. So I'm not sure if any of you guys out there are interested in this sort of thing. But if there's one way I can make the tedious task of testing out all 288 connection points of this patch bay, it's by making a video out of it. So really, I just need to make sure that each connection point on this cable plugged into number one is attached to the appropriate connection point on the other side of the snake and not connected to the other two connection points. There we go. One down, 96 to go. So for the first eight channels of this, my outputs from my Motu are already on a TRS connection, that's great. Second eight channels were gonna be an XLR connection to come out from my Behringer unit, but the last two are TRS cables. So here I am getting back into soldering for the first time in a while. And I'm thinking, wow, this is going real smooth. Till I realized, yeah, it's gotta go on there first. So sometimes you get a little too comfortable with your soldering iron. I just did that, burn the crap out of two of my fingers. Anyways, this is number two. The second one that I needed to switch over out of two so far. And uh, gotta say, don't miss soldering all that much. But if you have to do some soldering, here's some really helpful tips for you. Reading glasses are essentially just two magnifying glasses that you can put on your face. Excellent for soldering. Dentistry tools. They're made of aluminum and aluminum does not stick to solder. It was new when I got it. It hadn't been in a whole bunch of people's mouths, so don't worry. So these are really awesome for when you need to poke around at something that you're soldering or hold it down without actually sticking something else to the solder. So here is a very simple soldering in a nutshell. Make sure you line up your two pieces. As I mentioned earlier, when you're soldering cables, make sure you've got the rest of your attachment on the cable before you even start soldering. These little claw hand things are, are great to hold your uh, bits together. Make sure your soldering iron stays clean. You get a whole bunch of buildup on there, that'll make that'll uh, make it incredibly difficult to actually make your solder uh, melt and stick and all that good stuff. Once it's clean, your joint's in place, you want to tin the tip of your soldering iron. Get a little bit of solder on there to help the existing solder on here melt. Always remember that when you're soldering, the idea is to heat up the work, not just to melt the solder. You want to heat up the parts that you're going to be soldering together. Melt the solder on the work, so on the piece that you're actually soldering together, not on the soldering iron. Let it flow nicely over the uh, joint and uh, take the heat off. Let it dry naturally. If you blow on it to cool it down, you'll get what's called a cold solder joint and it won't be very uh, strong. There you have it. The more tedious part of audio engineering. I don't expect this to be the most thrilling video I'll ever make, but yeah, at least it's entertaining me right now. I'm gonna let that cool down and uh, go and get some fresh air because uh, apparently this room isn't as well ventilated as th I thought it was, even with a fan on. I'm starting to feel, those fu starting to feel those fumes. Oh, case in point.
was 96 channels tested. There was uh, two of them that I replaced the tips on, and uh, there's one ground up here that I had to re-solder back on. Don't know if that joint's gonna hold, because that's a pretty big chunk of metal for this little iron to, uh, to try and heat up. But uh, it's there for now. So I've already got it all planned out on my master scrap piece of paper. And uh, I might have to wait for another day, because I'm gonna need a hand installing this, but I'm uh, gonna give my good friend Clayton a call and see if he wants to come by and give me a hand. All right guys, so I've got my good friend Clayton here to help me out with the uh, installation of the patch bay. We uh, literally just sat here for about 10 minutes talking about how I'm gonna set it up and everything and I realized that I hadn't started the camera. So, uh, go me. I'll try and get all that information to you somehow. So I'm um, getting rid of the old patch bay that was in my system. Now the way this was all set up was that I had this essentially hooked up to all my gear in the rack and I would plug an insert cable into the Mackie and into the ins and outs here and be able to hook up my gear that way. What I wanted to change with a new patch bay is that I didn't want to have to go through the Mackie board anymore just to use the outboard gear. So with this new patch bay, I'm gonna be able to go from, uh, directly from my uh, computer into the gear and back interconnected and all that sort of thing. Farewell, old patch bay. <laughs> well done. Okay, so let's start feeding these cables in. Oh, what? It's not even part of the patch bay, it's just a cable. <laughs> Where did that come from? Might be able to use it though. Yeah, resistor. So I'm gonna get behind there and uh, I'm gonna pull the snakes through and I'll get you to lift this as I'm pulling them through and just set it in there on top of the ART. All right. Oh, it's comfy. It is not. No. I've got bad views so. though. It doesn't seem to want to sit in uh, properly. In fact, I think I'm gonna just make this. Let's see what we can do, if I may. Well, are you doing that? Are you doing that? Oh my god, you're doing that. <laughs> You'll never get that out. <laughs> May as well throw some rack screws in there. Yeah, you don't even need those. Pressure fit. I mean... There's better things I could be doing with my night, but I'm excited for the outcome. That's what I keep telling myself. Studio is still a mess, but the patch bay is installed. So with the old patch bay that I had in there, the way I had it set up was that this patch bay was essentially all the ins and outs from all the gear on the rack. I had it set up that way because for a while I was really into mixing analog on the console. So that console is a quarter inch insert jack. So you would take a quarter inch insert cable, plug the uh, TRS side into the insert slot on the console, plug the ins and outs into here, and I could access all the gear. I wanted to change that around because I don't use the console so much anymore for mixing. And I didn't want to have to send all my tracks through the console just to use the gear on the rack. So with this patch bay now, I've got eight outs coming from my Motu, eight outs coming from my Behringer ADA8200. Um, I've got eight inputs right now. I can have 16, but I haven't hooked up another eight just quite yet. And then I've also got all the ins and outs for all this gear and uh, eight channels of outputs from the console and lots of room to spare as well on that patch bay. So I got a lot of room for growth, which is just great. So, uh, so it's testing day. The 
thing about this patch bay is that it is full normal. So what this means is that the uh, upper and lower socket on each vertical row are internally linked. However, that link gets broken if something gets plugged into either of those sockets. So what's happening right now, if I hit play, we've got nothing plugged into the patch bay. But because I've got audio sending from number three out and returning to number three in, it's automatically connected by number three to my third unit here. I say third unit, but I've got the uh, compressor here as one, I've got the EQ here as one, and then this would be number three. But if I take this cable and plug it into three, that breaks the connection. Or plug it into three here, that also breaks the connection. Pretty cool. It saves me a lot on patch cables. So there it is. My new patch bay is installed. It's all been tested and everything's working perfectly. I couldn't be happier with how it turned. Well, I could be slightly happier with how it turned out because now my, uh, now my little rack spacing bar doesn't fit in there anymore. It was a pretty tight fit to begin with, but now I don't think I'm going to be able to squeeze it in. But hey, it's more about function than form, right? And this patch bay is functioning perfectly. Well, if you made it this far through the video, thank you so much for watching. You know the drill, subscribe, notification bell, all that stuff. We'll see you in the next video.